what do you think of that intro? That was pretty sweet, right? I bought myself a Christmas present, a drone. Um, it's a DJ Mavic Mini, a lot of fun to use. Uh, really having a blast with it. Welcome back into the shop, guys. Welcome to the second video of this Airstream build series. I know in the last one I promised that we'd be taking the shell off in this video, but I couldn't make it. Just too much content to cover. So in this video, we're gonna be removing the belly pan. Uh, we're gonna be working on the top, getting the AC unit off, which I'll tell you was a lot of work. I took the vents out as well. We're also gonna be paying a visit to a good friend of mine who has a giant abandoned mansion that he's restoring. Um, it kind of trumps what I'm doing, to be honest with you. It's pretty epic. So let's just jump right in to this build and get started. Today, I'm hoping to get everything ready to remove the shell. There's three components to an Airstream. There's the chassis, which is the metal frame that the axles and all are hooked to. There's the wood subfloor, and then there's the top shell frame. So the subfloor on this is the wood's got to all be replaced. The chassis or the frame I know has some rust from what we can see. Obviously, we haven't seen all of it. So we have to get the shell off, the underbelly off, the belly pan, and get the plywood off and basically just assess the frame damage and repair it. That's, that's where we're headed right now. I want to get all that done. And so today my goal is to take off the belly pan, which is an aluminum, let me get this, which is basically just an aluminum underpan to the trailer. It keeps critters and dirt and grime out of your uh, the bottom of your trailer. It also helps it be more aerodynamic as it drives down the road. It has um, these wraps on the side. We'll have to take those off. I've already removed a trim piece here. Uh, it's very similar to that one up there. And then these banana wraps, which I spoke about a little bit in the first video, we want to try to keep those and repair them if we can because you cannot buy these. These are not something you can easily replace. The propane lines all run underneath. We need to pull all those. Uh, so let's jump in and get started. Okay, so propane wires are off. So propane, that probably ran the furnace, hot water heater, and the fridge. But the next step here, you see all these rivets. And it's funny how they put a piece of aluminum, it's like an aluminum washer. And it was common for these belly pans to shake back and forth once they kind of got loose. It keeps it from rubbing and, and, and actually rubbing a hole through the head of the rivet just goes through the aluminum. So yeah, this, this will not be a whole lot of fun because underneath this belly pan is insulation and probably dead animals and poop tanks and all kinds of grossness. So I'm going to put on some safety glasses and just start pulling off this aluminum. I, well, we've lost a drill. This thing broke. I don't really know what happened with that. And so, out of pure frustration, I just decided I was going to tear this thing off. The rivets are pretty corroded. They're pretty bad. Uh, so, a little, little brute force and ignorance, and they break right off. You can see, although I'm leaving rivets in the frame, so I was going to have to come back and get those out. Working on your back is not fun. I just gotta, I gotta push through and get this done. I was thinking, I couldn't find the seam on this. And so right past this axle, right there is the seam. So I'm gonna unbolt the seam, hopefully get this one piece out, and then work on the back half. Ah, oh, so much. Gotta work smarter. No more wrench. Ten times 
faster. Oh, it's all the way on the other side. Gotta reach. Ah. Ah. Got it. Whew. Let me show you guys, I'm stuck. I don't like this. Whew. Just wanted to show you the quality. If you can see it. Those are to your trailer brakes, nice and uh, some nice quality work there. A little electrical tape twisted together. Okay, so having done that now, I realized I didn't need to go through all that trouble to crawl on there and get that aluminum belly pan off. All I needed to do was unrivet the side wraps to get, to get the shell off. So I'm telling you this, if you're watching and you're trying to learn how to do this process, which I'm doing as I go, if you're pulling the shell off, just unrivet the sides um, where the belly wrap comes and meets the side. Uh, the elevator bolts, you can access them once you do that, but even then they're so rusty, you end up having, I ended up having to cut them. So it was a lot of work I didn't need to do. I mean, eventually I am going to take those off, but it's a lot easier to do with the um, chassis hooked up to the uh, gantry cranes and higher up and everything off of it. So lesson learned. I wanted to share that with you guys. Let's move on. All right, so this is the banana wrap. Anybody out there who knows anything about metalworking, can this be fixed? I certainly hope it can, but it does not look promising. Okay, so that was that was not fun work. That took a while. A lot of um, crawling under the trailer, a lot of dust in my face. Glad it's over with. Probably my least favorite part so far. But um, it's done, pushed through. I'm not super um, upset with the amount of damage I see so far. There's some pretty considerable damage right here behind this wheel wheel. There's outriggers that have already broken off and I'll go inside and show you that. So here's all the belly pans, you got the big main one there's one more underneath that i will throw out these i don't think i'll reuse them except for the banana wraps i think i'll use them as templates i think i can get new aluminum and refab these uh, let's go inside and take a look at what's going on so we also got obviously got the wheel wells out um you can see now all the holes you can see down to the ground pretty rough looking uh this wheel well Tore out the outrigger as you saw, obviously, and then this is just all going to need a new, we're going to need to weld on new outriggers, and, you know, that's just what it is. So I was a little bit aggressive with removing that wheel well, and honestly, I'm not going to reuse them. Anything plastic um, on this Airstream, I'm just going to toss. Uh, there was a ton of leakage coming through those, and um, I think that what I can do is design and have someone fabricate some really cool aluminum wheel wells uh, to go in their place. I do watch Driving and Vivin's um, YouTube. They've done a remodel on Argosy, so uh, a lot of y'all mentioned that in the comments. And um, yeah, I I've watched some of their videos, and they fabricated a pretty cool little um, box out of aluminum for their wheel well. I'll do the same thing. I may make my curve to save on some space, but uh, I think that's the way to go. These old plastic wheel wells are just brittle and not any good anymore. Uh, it could have been a little bit nicer to the C channel that it was hooked to because I do need to reuse that. Uh, but regardless, um, we're going to make new ones. We're going to fab new wheel wells. <laughs> Let me just tell you that working on top of this camper was tough. I mean, getting, there's so much Volcom, which is the sealant they used, 
to seal in these vents in the AC unit and it was a nightmare getting that off. I found the best thing to do was use a wire wheel on my grinder and just grind it away. It's super messy. You're gonna have little chunks of rubber all over the place, um, but it's really quick and fast. So I, the other option, I guess, is to scrape it or use chemicals, which would take forever. So I would suggest using that wire wheel. It works great for me. The two vents are attached with rivets, so those just get hit with a punch in the center and then drilled out with a 1 8 inch drill bit. And um, from there, it's just a matter of kind of leveraging them up. I used a crowbar and then that piece of wood to kind of spread the load because that aluminum was, uh, you know, it's obviously thin. You don't want to leverage on it, you'll dent it. And even standing up on that roof, you'll see in the video, um, it pops in and pops out. I tried to stand on the ribs the best I could. It's not that easy, but I didn't notice any damage from it and I was keeping an eye on it. I was making sure I would go back in inside the camper and I would look around to make sure nothing was caving in. Everything would go kind of dent in and then pop back out. On the AC unit, now that was a huge chore because uh, it's, it's just really, was really full of Volcom, especially on the inside. Uh, the, the great thing though about the AC is it had screws instead of rivets, which is a little bit faster to remove, although the screws were rusty, kind of rusted and corroded onto the aluminum. So um, some of them, it wasn't that they, they wouldn't turn, but the head stripped out really easy. Uh, but once I got the screws out, you know, you just can't, I, I didn't, you couldn't pick up on it. It was still stuck. And then trying to leverage with a crowbar really was a bad idea. I was afraid I was going to dent something. So it was really hard to find any way to lift it. Uh, I, I did a lot of cutting on the inside of the Volcom and finally just grabbed the ratchet strap and hooked it to the gantry crane. And that worked really well. I just cranked on that and it, it popped it loose. It popped that Volcom loose. And then, uh, then it was a matter, once it was that loose, I could get underneath it and kind of lift it myself and get it up. And it wasn't as heavy as I was expecting, so it was actually pretty easy to manage uh, once I got it free of the trailer. Okay, so the plan here, which should work just fine, is to take the AC unit, slide it down the 2x4s, right into the truck. I think it's a great idea. We'll see if it works. That was close. I almost uh, almost busted out my window when it rolled over, but it worked. So that's good. Now all I need to do is go dump it, and I've got just a place to go. Right. How much are you paying me for all this stuff? Uh, it's free, dude. I gave you a plug. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? Everybody, go subscribe to Matt's channel. Yeah, hit me up. So the advantage I have over Matt is I have a house on wheels I'm restoring. All Matt has is a bunch of stick frame and 360 degree panoramic views. This place is incredible. So last time I was here, I was with John. We were dumping insulation yeah, and there was walls and everything. Yeah. And now there's... Yeah, you were knocking out. It's been months. Knocking out the doors. Wow, this is crazy, dude. It's a little different, a little different. This back wall was the worst. 
Oh wow, it's all new, yeah. It's all Oh wow. You got some work to do there still? Mm-hmm. Holy cow. So that's pretty much what this whole back wall looks like. All that Is it really? Yeah. The back wall is so bad. So do they have to brace it as they're framing it yeah. and tearing it out? Yep. Golly. Yeah, he was scared about that. He was like, I mean, yeah. 30 feet right there. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so if you haven't already, go check out the Demolition Ranch, Off the Ranch, Abandoned Mansion Renovation. Like, comment, subscribe, thank you. <laughs> Everybody already knows who he is, so it's kind of ridiculous. Oh, here's my truck. Walking right past it. Thanks for the help, dude. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so that is gonna wind it down for this video. I just wanna say thanks to everybody for all the positive comments y'all threw my way on the first video. That is so encouraging. I still feel really overwhelmed by this project, um, but it helps to hear people say you can do this. Um, thanks to the new subscribers that have come in. I uh, appreciate you guys uh, tuning in and, and finding interest in this. We will be lifting the shell off in the next video, so stay tuned for that. That is happening. Also, to all the subscribers out there who aren't interested in the Airstream and have been with me for a long time and just like the woodworking, that's still happening. I just finished up a really cool display case for these Navy swords. It's got hand-cut dovetails. So that, I'm editing that right now. That video will be going live soon. And I have some really cool projects in the works as well. So I'm going to try to keep a really good balance of Airstream work and furniture work so everyone is happy. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.